and welcome back to Char Reads. Today I'm going to be talking about Homesick or Why I Live in a Shed by Katrina Davis. This came out in 2019 and it is a memoir about uh, a woman who is extremely well educated but is a musician and a traveller and a writer um, and she feels so trapped by the housing rental market um, that she moves back to uh, where she spent a lot of her childhood in Cornwall and squats in a shed that used to be her father's office and it takes place the course of the year and it's how she sort of turns that empty <laughs> sad structure into a home. I had quite mixed feelings about this book um, because on the one hand the the setting um, the kind of Theruvian natural building a home for yourself being more connected with nature um, I live for that <laughs> And because it takes place in Cornwall, there's so much stuff about the sea um, and lots of small stories about surfing, which I love. Um, I spent a lot of my childhood in Cornwall as well. So that's the things I really liked. And I really enjoyed the writing style. It drew me along very easily, um, but was quite poetic at times. There are these little asides where she would look up the etymology of a word in her big dictionary and it, the kind of history of each of these words which she chose would sort of like feed into her meditating around a topic. Like I remember her looking up um, dwell, the meaning of the word dwell. And it has these sort of contradictory origins about like ownership, um, which is, yeah, very thematically relevant. But on the other side of things, the book is largely about um, the property market. And um, she's got a huge chip on her shoulder and there's a lot of political bitterness um, in the book about like capitalism and the way the property market is set up and I don't really agree with her on many things or just feel quite mixed at myself about those things. So let's talk about housing poverty. I feel like I read this book at the turning point of me feeling more radical about these matters. On the one hand I'm like come on, just play the game of life. Like it's not that expensive to rent a house if you're working, which you clearly are capable of, just play the game. And on the other hand, I'm like, fuck all of this. <laughs> like owning property is the key to life and it's handed to many people and not handed to others. But that's fucking unfair and it's fucking difficult. And we shouldn't have to live in a world where just to like have shelter over your head, you have to work what 50 hours a week. I do think this completely misrepresented housing poverty though. Um, there was on one page, she was visiting a, um, a house to rent and it was 500 pounds a month. Um, and then on that page, she's talking with her sister about getting a job um, and she's like, oh, it's just minimum wages. Like I wouldn't even be able to afford it. And the thing is like full-time minimum wage pay is 1400 pounds a month, like almost three times that of that house and I think she acts as if like it just doesn't add up and that's impossible but what she fails to recognize is that it's not impossible it's just like a sacrifice that most people are willing to make she feels so entitled to her free time and being able to do whatever she wants without having to like work in shitty jobs to, to pay money to live places um at the expense of her comfort and security I wish she would have just said like I don't want to be in that rat race. I don't want to be in a rat race where I only get to spend half my time writing or whatever. Like she just wants a life where she has complete control, which you just can't do in an organized society. I met up with a friend yesterday who's um, quite a few years younger than me. I used to be her teacher at camp and she would just finished university and needs to register to be self-employed to start paying taxes because she's freelancing. Um, and she was just complaining so hard about how much money the system takes from you. Like you've got income tax and you've got NI and you've got council tax and you've got bills. And it's like, yeah, but firstly, it's not that much. Like I, I doubt that she'd ever pay more than like 30% of her, of the money that she earns to tax, not including renting. Um, but like you get 70% and you also get free healthcare. So I think it sort of adds up. And I perfectly accept that in order for me to live a comfortable lifestyle, I am going to have to invest money in the things that are necessary for that. Sure, I would like to pay less rent. And that is because I live in London. I rent in London and I rent a studio in London that is more than I pay for this flat. And 
that is extremely expensive. So it just had so galling for me for her being like, no one can afford this 500 pounds a month. And I'm sitting here like, I'm paying more than four times that every month for the spaces that I've chosen to rent. But it's a trade-off I'm willing to make. It's a trade-off I'm willing to make. One thing that drove me nuts about this book <laughs> and that early on it sort of flashes forward to um, someone having broken into her shed and stolen like her laptop um, and her guitar and everything that she has of value. And we come back to this towards the end and someone has set up a just giving page for her. And this is like the end triumph of the book is that people are going to donate money for her to be able to rebuy all of this stuff. And I'm like, it's her fault. It's her fault that she is not financially stable. She's been given all of the gifts since she went to Oxbridge. She could definitely get a job to make enough money to afford comfort and security and is then leaning on the charity, the charity of others that are spending their time working hard in jobs that may, they may not want um, to, to donate money for her to replace her shit. I feel like a lot of the left are like systems um, of like community charity, like just giving, um, are the people's solution to an unjust system. Um, when it's like, no, you should broadly be responsible for yourself. <laughs> she has no reason besides the hubris of feeling like all of her time is her own to um, end up in that situation. So I'm really annoyed at all that, but as I said, I'm maybe at a turning point or maybe just being a bit more open to the idea that this whole thing is fucked and you should be able to do whatever the hell you want to spend your time doing. The amount of money you can earn from doing something shouldn't equal its value. And I do believe that in many ways, but also I'm like, do just get a job. One more thing that I also didn't like about this book or really made me mistrust it, um, was that at the very start, there's an author's note. Um, everything in this book is true to my experience, although some names and details have been changed and some individual characters are composites of several real life characters. I've also altered the time scale in which events took place, sometimes reordering the events and squashing several years into one. I hope the reader will forgive me these liberties. This made me really mistrustful of a lot of the poignant events in the book because it fits into this calendar year and the passage of time is really relevant in the way that it's about like harvesting food and the sort of like insulation and protection she needs in the shed from the outside world. Um, and stuff like seasonal jobs. The time of year is very relevant to the narrative and the idea that it's been squashed from several years down into one um, makes everything feel a lot less real. And I know you could say like, Charlotte, fiction is fiction and that's fine. But I feel like a memoir that's half fiction is such a cop out because it's hard to make something out of nothing. It's hard to write pure fiction. And it's also hard to stay true to your own experiences. I can forgive merging characters um, because that's like the only way to deliver a narrative is to have some boundaries. But it's so much easier if you have like a whole series of events and just chop and change them really freely to make an interesting narrative. Um, cause I don't think that's what memoirs are about. Maybe that's unfair of me. What do you think? Do you think that's a cop out? Um, cause I did. I feel like I've been really negative about this book when I did broadly enjoy it. As I said, I really like the writing style. Um, all of the aspects of of nature and of surfing and of being a Cornwall is just, love it. My brother moved to Cornwall about five years ago and my mum moved to Cornwall last year and I'm going to go visit in a couple of weeks, which will be lovely. And I had that in mind when I was reading this. I was just like, I know how peaceful and calming and invigorating it can be to be by the sea. And I want that every day. So we're moving to Brighton. At the end of the year, I'm packing up sticks and moving somewhere where I will have slightly cheaper rent uh, but more importantly, will be near the sea, which I'm very much looking forward to. So this has been a video about Homesick by Katrina Davis. Let me know what you think and I will see you down in the comments. Bye.